everyone that really knows me well has always said I'm going to run for office one day. <laughs> you know, and of course, I always said my line, issues, not office. What it's really about is, is adding this on to service that I do in the community. It's whether it's through my foundation, with the kids, the scholarships, and all of that. To me, it's an extension of service. And I just felt like um, I was doing these things, but now it's time to take it to the next level. And the reason I decided to run for Senate is because I felt like it, that would be an extension of that service. My Olympic career was, was over five Olympics starting in 1980. What was interesting is that my first Olympic Games, uh, the Olympic team actually did not go because I was on the 1980 team at boycott. So I was the youngest male on the Olympic team at 18 years old. So I was a baby. <laughs> but four years later was my second um, Olympic team and first Olympic Games when I went to Los Angeles. And many people may remember that. I, I won four gold medals in the 100 meters, 200 meters, long jump and relay and the first person since Jesse Owens to do that. Um, and then actually my third Olympics was in Seoul, Korea, where I came home with two more gold medals and a silver. Uh, we didn't get a chance to run a relay because we had a, a relay mishap in the qualifying rounds before I started running. Um, my fourth games, uh, fourth team rather, and third games was in Barcelona and I won two more gold medals um, in the long jump and the relay to bring my total of eight at that time. And then the last games was in Atlanta, here in the United States. And I went a long jump to bring my total to nine goals and one silver. I have the Carl Lewis Foundation. And what we do is we focus on giving scholarships and supporting youth, youth sports programs. So we actually, we give financial scholarships to youth sports programs. We give um, uh, scholarships to my, my high school and we give things out there. So that's education in sports. And, um, and also community service. So all the kids that get something, we have community service component um, linked to it because we wanna make sure that the kids understand it's more than just school and work. Um, and then I'm also a board member of Best Buddies, which works with kids with intellectual disabilities. And I've been there with Best Buddies uh, since 1989 and a board member since 1994. And um, it, it started by Anthony Shriver and it's just a wonderful organization getting people from the community together with kids with intellectual disabilities, letting them know they're, they're people too, they're just like us, we're all the same, and what we can learn through friendship. Um, I'm also a UN ambassador for the Food and Agricultural Organization, which we're trying to basically cure hunger in the world. So I've traveled all around the world just recently to Santo Domingo and to Haiti and met with both presidents about reforestation in those countries and what they're doing for education. And that's something I would love to do here because agriculture is important in this district. I'd love to get kids down there and bring people back, exchange ideas, see what we can do. I do have a, a great garden here. I wish I could grow all year long, but you know, of course you don't. But, but what happened is that back in the late 80s, um, I changed my diet to a vegan, vegan diet. And when I became um, a vegan for that period, Obviously you're eating so many more vegetables and we're in the store all the time. So I said, let me start growing some herbs because you can't always get a lot of the herbs you, you'd like. So we started growing herbs in, in, in a small herb garden in my home. And then that just started to spread, to spread. And next thing you know, you know, lettuce, tomatoes, this and that. And then the garden just kept growing and it tastes so much better. And I just loved it that um, expanded into that and then it became a hobby of mine to have the garden and to get it and to learn it and know the soil and to grow those those things so then now I have here I have a really nice sized garden plus a greenhouse and in different places so I, I grow you know greens peppers herbs um, I just went down recently and bought two blueberry plants in Hamilton so I did so I have blueberries banana tree so I, I, I do everything and it really came out of me changing my diet to a vegan vegetarian diet and even now I'm still but mostly a vegetarian. I decided to become a foster parent. I, I had wonderful parents, and so I hope that I can kind of instill that in some of the kids that I deal with. Um, but, but yeah, I'm a foster parent, and, and I didn't want to go through the process of just doing a, um, just saying I'll pop up here and there, but I actually wanted to be in the nitty gritty, so I'm a license, have my license, and uh, it's been a joy for me to work, to work with the kids and to go to uh, parties and see kids and uh, that kind of stuff, so it's been wonderful. I was in India, and India has, I think, about 300 million homeless people. That's like America. And I was walking, and, and what a lot of the Indians do, you know, they, they, because they're homeless, they, they squat. If there's an open lot, they squat. So you'll often see homeless laying somewhere right near where uh, a building is. And I said, how do you just 
skip over everyone every day going to work like this. And he says, oh, you get used to it. I was like, wow, you just get used to that? And I said, no, 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 we can't accept that. We, we have to do, it, it just hit me so hard. I was young. And I said, you just get used to it and just accept it and get used to it. So it hit me hard. Then I came back and I started looking at people even here differently. Um, and saying, wow, look at, you know, look at the struggles and everything. How can we help that person? And it, and it did it evolve even more. And that's how I got more involved in the community because, because of that one thing, we just get used to, we shouldn't get used to it. We should always be trying to do more and to help and to expand what we can do for other people and to make their lives better. That's what we should be doing. We should not get used to it. My parents uh, were tremendous. They, were, they traveled with us. They were competed with us. They did everything. Um, they went to every event. And they kept me grounded because of my parents were wonderful growing up. And when I became a professional athlete, they were there as well. But they were guiding us there. I mean, they were still giving advice. My father and mother were, were like my closest advisors really into my 20s, especially until my father passed away. And I always called them for advice because life lessons and all this stuff are very important in making decisions. And when it became very difficult, they were the ones that kept me grounded. We anchored everything around dinner. Dinner was kind of the constant. So either we did homework before and practice after or vice versa, but we were always together for dinner. Now that I'm older, I realize that's exactly when they said, how was school? What's going on? How's your life? Everything happy? You know, what's, what's happening? You know, they really picked our brains in those times. When, when we did our homework together as a family, that was family time. So you're, you're educating your children, you're helping them learn. Their, their parents are learning what's going on in their kid's school and their life. And it's just more time to spend with your parents. And that's what I thought. So when we're hearing this cut back on homework and give them more downtime, the reality is you're taking away family time. So um, homework should be a part of family time. And, and, and I feel very strongly about that because we need to push our children. And I don't mean just push them down the road, but motivate them. They, they do not know their potential. You have, to, you have to help them find their potential. But we constantly make it easier and easier and easier, they'll never reach their potential. I can't go by a week without someone saying, oh, your mother taught me, or your father taught me, oh, he said this, or they said that. So I, I see the value of what they did for these people's lives. It wasn't just educate them. And there's so many wonderful teachers out there exactly like my parents were, that, that, that I said, boy, it was great to know that word. I, I love that teacher. Or, you might not have loved them then, but now you look back and say, I thank them for what they did. And, and so we have, um, you know, our governor now is, is just bullying everyone in terms of the way he talks down to people and the way he treats people. And honestly, what we need to do is we coming together as people from New Jersey and understand the importance of our education. You know, just a few years ago, we used to always complain about teachers are not paid enough and we just we put them on such a wonderful pedestal because they are so important and now they're being vilified and it's just unfair. So what we have to do is give the teachers a voice and support them. Let them be creative. Let them get in the classroom and enjoy that experience because they do a lot for our children. And we're, I travel around the world and I see that's what other countries are doing. And, and other countries are motivating their children, making classrooms important. and, and, and lifting up their teachers and making it exciting and they, because they're trying to compete with America. And here we are, we're trying to back off. And so what we should do is support our teachers. I just feel so indebted to my parents for, what, for the commitment they made. And, and now my mother's 81 years old, so we have to worry about things, about her health care, what's going on, you know, who, you know, who's getting her here? Is just she gets sick, can she go somewhere? Um, does she have a new car? You know, these are all the things I have to worry about. And it's, it's great because she's still um, lucid, she's still she's wonderful, uh, she talks, we, we still just discuss a lot of issues, she calls me, what about this, what's going on, it's still an advisor. But, but, she, um, but, I, but I do worry about that because she's in her 80s. And we, we look at our parents, if you look at someone at 80, you say, wow, they're 80, but then it's your mother, they didn't feel like they're 80. You know, so, so um, I, I, I think it's, it's wonderful now that she's at a point where she, you know, we're able to support and help her. But I look at the challenges we have in New Jersey. You know, the um, she's losing, she's getting cuts. And I see those cuts, so those cuts directly come to me, which is fine because I can manage it. But what about the family that don't have someone like myself that can help their mother? I mean, you know, that senior is getting, they're getting cuts, they're taking it. And, and just a few years ago, we did everything for our seniors, and now we're cutting our seniors. So, so I see it firsthand because I deal with it firsthand. I wake up every day, every single day, and I say, you've got to be kidding me. This little, small little kid from Willingboro, New Jersey, 
is, is, you know, has a beautiful home. You know, I can take care of my family. I've been around the world, one of the most successful athletes of all time. I, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I, I am so honored. And, and, and the reality is that uh, we're at a point where the top one, five percent it's improved so much over the last 20 or 30 years. We've gotten so much wealthier and then we can't give three or four more percent. And so my thing is that there, there's a challenge for everyone else. So I, I look at my mother who's getting cut and then I'm getting a, a break. I don't need a break. She doesn't need a cut. So, so the thing is that I, I have no problem giving more because I'm thankful where I am. And so I think it's time that we need to stand up and say, it's shared sacrifices is something that people say, but the reality, the only way you can, you can do that is by stepping out front and saying it. Because I think we, we love to say USA, USA, but not me. And it's time um, to go back to saying USA, USA, all of us. Because I, 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 I put USA on my chest. Um, I got my values. Everything that I learned was growing up in Willingboro, New Jersey from my wonderful parents. And then I put USA on my chest and I went out against the world. And I, and I still have that pride of this country because I, I had a unique opportunity to go somewhere, perform, and then raise the flag and run around a stadium. Were you kidding me? And, and 80 or 90,000 people are cheering. So I can't say, well, take 3%, 4% more to give back so that someone else and make their lives better. I just think that we need to step up and I, me, need to step up and say, why are you cutting, you know, uh, cutting my mother and giving me a break? It's, it's, it should be backwards.